Hello and welcome back to the channel, Script Case by Jamie. That's me, of course. And in today's video, I should all actually say welcome to MySQL Workbench. Because, yes, that is today's topic. Again, another video on our mini foundation series. Okay, so let's have a look, shall we? Today we want to actually have a quick look at creating ourselves a little database that we could then use to process and design our, you know, our, our data, what we want to collect, what we want to do. So I'll start by creating a new model here in MySQL Workbench, and the easiest way is really just to add a new diagram. These diagrams are really nice. Okay, so I can place a new uh, table here on my uh, page and I wanna add a few of those. So I will just go ahead and add say three of them. And here, for instance, we want to then capture some information that we have related to our project, our company, our business, whatever it is that you want to basically store. So I'll start here with table three. If I just double click that, I have then the, the table name. So let me just adjust that first of all. And here I'll say our customers. Okay, so for our customers, I'll just double click here in the first field and it will automatically add ID customers for us, which is perfect. We don't need any more. That needs to be auto increasing. Okay, so I'll click here the AI. It is a primary key and it is not null. Okay, so it is auto increasing means it will always keep adding a new number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? And the next field or the next column that we have here, we want to basically add here, start adding the, 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 the fields that we want to have. So here, for instance, we have then the customer name. So we'll say full name. And then you may want to change here the size of the varchar. So in this case, it could be 250 as it's a long name. And then you may want to have the first name, the last name, the middle name, the city. Yeah, you want to have these two. So we could just add, quickly add some of those. So I'll say city and we can add then the country in here as, as well. And the country would typically just be two characters. And if it's just two characters, well, we don't really need a varchar. We can choose here a char. So there we have a char, and I'll just add a two in there, and that's all that needs. Okay, so defining your data type within your database, first of all, is or can be very important. Okay, because as we say, the foundation of your project, and when you design your database, it is important that you have your IDs defined, like we have here now, our ID customers. Okay, it doesn't have to be an integer, it can be a varchar, whatever else, but you need to have an ID there. And then ideally, if you have data that is related, you want to have those relationships built up. So here, for instance, I'll say this table here, I'll cut table two, this is going to be our customer, say, notes. Okay, and in here, I'll just double click again, auto increasing, and then here we can add then note date, for instance, change that to a date field, date time, and here note title, or we just call it title like so, we'll do, and here we would want maybe 250 characters, okay, and then here we would maybe want to have the note content, so let's just add content, I'm just having typos today, content, and then here for this we could have then for instance here a medium text or maybe a long text, or if you want to use a HTML editor, then you would maybe want to use a blob field, okay, and in this case I'll just choose here the medium text because it's going to be a basic note, but remember these are the customer notes. Now, I have two choices. I can now add in here manually the ID customers, okay? And that could then store here the ID of our customers. So I would change that here also to an integer field, and that is then related here to our ID customers here. 
Now, I could just leave that like so, and I'll be happy, and I could go then create my project inside of Scriptcase, and I will have to indicate what that ID is. Now, if I remove this field, for instance, if I delete that field, now remember, we want to have that referenced and, and we can reference that in multiple ways. Now, one other way before we look at maybe the best possible way in this case is to have here a separate table. Okay, so here we could have note, let's actually call this customer note reference. Okay, so here I will add then an integer ID again, uh, an auto increasing integer again. And then here, I want to add then the two fields for here, my ID customer notes, and then ID customers. So I could reference them now in here manually. So that would then be ID customer. Again, we choose an integer field here. And here we have then ID customer underscore notes. And again, I could choose this here as an integer because again, integer, integer, we want to have them the same. And just like that, then I have here a table which provides the reference for these two fields. Okay, and that is basic, the, 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 the basis of this. Now we could, of course, add just one ID here into the customer notes, and that would reference here the customers. Now, do always remember that we can actually place relationships between these tables, okay? And just like that, I add a reference, so I place here a new one-to-one -one non-identifying relationship between the two, and that then places in here my customer notes, here the ID. And that then provides a hard relationship or a coded relationship within the database, okay? Now, this method would basically be better than this method, but it really depends on your data, on your tables, on the relationships, and more. And at the same time, it's important to note that with this sort of structure, with these relationships built up, with your data types selected correctly within your database, as well as references built up. So in this case, if I didn't want to actually have this reference like so, I could have the reference in this table. So here again, I would need to delete both of these references. And here I would then choose, let me choose that again, these two tables, one way around. Okay, so here and that one. And then again, this one and that one. So that would then create a relationship between those ta two tables. And that would then also be much better than what we had previously. And the main reason for that is that when you develop your applications in script case, it reads the database. This is your foundation. This is what will make your ship sink. Okay, so having this all set up correctly within the database in the first place will make a tremendous difference within your development. And that also applies in any other framework, any other language, as long as your data is good, the platform itself should be good. It should be, right? And in most cases, I'm sure it will be, okay? But if your database is not correctly associated, if there are tags all over the place, for instance, I could have here in my notes, an active tag, okay? And here I would then have that maybe also available in here, okay? Then basically these two active tags are performing the same thing. And that can of course then be, one of them would essentially be irre irrelevant. But then when you are coding or developing the application, which one are you going to use? At one stage, you will use one. At another stage, you will use another. So having your data and your database tables clean, organized, accounted for, and of course, well, uh, nicely laid out <laughs> with nicely colorful backgrounds, of course, then your platform will make a big difference. And that is, of course, your foundation, your starting point. And from your starting point, it can only get better.
But if the starting point or your foundation, as I keep saying, is not good, well, your passengers are going to sink, okay? And it will not be pretty. It may not be pretty today. You may be quite happy with what you have created and it may work for a little while. But then when you come in here later on and you want to add extra tables to this, you may add them completely differently and not having the all, it all gelling together. Okay, let's just say that it's not gelling together. It's not sticking. And if it doesn't stick, it's like, yeah, the cement that we have in our houses. It's the same thing. You know, if it's not sticking. Your house is just going to crumble. Okay, so do be sure that you spend as much time as possible on the foundation of your project, i.e. designing those processes, creating the layout of your pages that you are wanting to have, the views that you are wanting ha to have, and then go ahead and start with your database. Have all your data available, first of all, in those initial tables, and then maybe afterwards, think about how you want to reference those, whether that be in a separate table as we have here, or in an individual table like so. OK, and then just like that, of course, we have our reference built up. Script case will read this and apply these references. And that also means that the dependencies for the applications or for your data are also in place. OK, and that is very important because if this linkage, for instance, does not exist, and we have this in another table. And again, I've only referenced it. I have not applied the relationship between the two datas or the IDs from the multiple tables. In those cases, script case will not read that. It will not know that. It will not provide that relationship between those two tables, those IDs for you. It is not that smart. Okay, so it's very important that you have that pre set up and of course ready to go because then your project will be more fluid. Your applications will be generated, your linkages will be built, and of course your selects and more will all be filled in for you. And at the same time, the dependencies, they will also exist when they are required, okay, automatically. And don't forget, you can also always provide encryption as well as calculations and much more on the database side. And in the majority of cases, that will be more efficient. OK, so that is all today. I hope you have enjoyed this little series of foundation videos because, yes, I'm afraid this is the last one for now. Maybe some more later. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. And as per usual, if you've liked this video or it's helped you in any shape or form, please go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and of course, stay safe and be well.